On Capitol Hill, executives from Facebook, Google and Twitter testified to a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee Tuesday about how Russia spread propaganda ahead of the 2016 presidential election using the major social media websites. On Monday, Facebook disclosed as many as 126 million users were exposed to the political advertisements bought by a Russian-linked company. This is Facebook's general counsel, Colin Stretch, being questioned by Delaware Senator Christopher Coons about one of these ads. The ad claims that Hillary Clinton is, quote, only one politician except Barack Obama who is despised by the overwhelming majority of American veterans. And it says if Clinton were elected president, the, quote, army should be withdrawn from her control according to amendments to the Constitution. This ad is nothing short of the Russian government directly interfering in our elections, lying to American citizens, duping folks who believe they are joining and supporting a group that is about veterans and based in Texas, when in fact it's paid for in rubles by Russians. Should Facebook be allowed to be a platform that foreign adversaries can use to run political ads, sir? Senator. That advertisement has no place on Facebook. That was Facebook's general counsel, Colin Stretch, being questioned by Delaware Senator Christopher Coons during the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee hearing Tuesday. And this is Facebook's Colin Stretch being questioned by Senator Al Franken. How did Facebook, which prides itself on being able to process billions of data points and instantly transform them into personal connections for its user, somehow not make the connection that electoral ads paid for in rubles were coming from Russia. Those are two data points. American political ads and Russian money, rubles. How could you not connect those two dots. Special counsel Robert Mueller is continuing to widen his investigation into whether President Trump's campaign colluded with Russia to influence the 2016 election, with plans to interview Trump's current communications director, Hope Hicks, and multiple other current White House officials. Hicks has already retained a personal lawyer. The expansion of the investigation comes after Mueller announced the first indictments in the investigation, charging Trump's former campaign chair, Paul Manafort, and his former business associate, Rick Gates, with 12 counts, including money laundering and conspiracy against the United States. Both men surrender themselves to the FBI Monday, and they're now under house arrest. New revelations show Manafort had three different U.S. passports, each with different numbers. Rick Gates has 55 different bank accounts with 13 different banks, including some based in Cyprus and Britain. President Trump is also trying to discredit and diminish the significance of a third Trump advisor, George Papadopoulos, who pleaded guilty in early October to lying to the FBI and is cooperating with investigators in exchange for a more lenient sentence. On Tuesday, Trump tweeted, "'Few people knew the young, low-level volunteer named George, who's already proven to be a liar,' unquote.